Hey, City family, this is Apostle O. Welcome once again to The Core Experience. Listen, if you haven't already done so, make yourself known by going ahead right now and dropping where you're hailing from, how you're connecting to this broadcast in the chat menu. Um, we certainly want to uh, celebrate you and uh, recognize where you're calling in or better yet, watch, watching from. So whatever city, state, let us know. Listen, you're in for a treat tonight. It's Bible study, and as you know it, we're excited about getting into the Word of the Lord, and tonight is no different, so please go ahead and get your Bible, uh, get something to take notes with, because you're going to get a lot of information in a short space of time. I'm excited because over the last few weeks, we've been talking about the subject, really in general, ministry gifts working in times of uncertainty or in times of crisis, and tonight is no different. In fact, I'm excited because tonight I get to share another ministry gift, my spiritual daughter, in that of teacher Mavis Wilson. She's going to bring the word of the Lord to you tonight. I'm excited for such. But before we get there, a couple of things I must share with you. Number one, go ahead and enlarge your screen. Enlarge your screen so you can have the best canvas, the best way to view this broadcast without any of those pesky notifications and distractions that can come, come about. So go ahead and do that now. Now, in addition to that, you can also go ahead, especially if you're a first time guest, welcome to the City of Restoration, welcome to the Core Experience. Go ahead and subscribe now, subscribe to our channel, as well as like and even share. That's a great way to evangelize, to share with our community what's happening as a part of your church. So please go ahead and do that now. Now, throughout the broadcast, should you have any questions um, about uh, the ministry or perhaps what you're learning, or perhaps something peaks in your interest or something said really hits home for you, go ahead and make a note of that in the chat menu. We would love to hear from you as well. My next note is simply this. If you love the broadcast and better yet, if you just want to be a blessing to the kingdom of God and to this ministry, go ahead now. And so we appreciate your seed offerings. We appreciate what you do in helping us to continue week after week to share the gospel and to also serve those in need. So you can go ahead and be a part of that experience. It's also a worship opportunity for you. Now, guess what? Get ready because I'm going to go ahead and kind of take myself out of the equation because I know all too well that I can keep going and preachers are not good for that. But there is a preacher for you today, and that is Teacher Mavis Wilson. Teacher, how are you doing this evening? Oh, just great, Apostle. Just great. Awesome. Awesome. Listen, I appreciate you taking the assignment, and I know God is going to use you greatly tonight. I'll let you introduce the subject, but guys, guess what? I love hearing her minister the word of the Lord. She does it in such, in my opinion, such a unique way. Um, and it's quite refreshing. And so if you've ever had the opportunity to sit under her ministry gift, whether it's Sunday school or perhaps a Bible study live kind of setting, it's a blessing. Tonight, I know you're going to be richly blessed. So teacher, I will throw it over to you. Go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and what it is that God has laid on your heart. Thank you so much. Folks, don't go anywhere. I'll be there at the end to uh, lead us out. God bless. Teacher. Thank you, Apostle. Hello, City family. I miss y'all so much. But God is good. And he keeps us united in his own way, connected in his own way. So... If I look like I'm scared, I'm scared. But if y'all pray, I can get through this. We can get through this. Amen. So Apostle asked me to talk about the role of a teacher in times of uncertainty. And so, as he said, I'm one of the teachers in the house, and I will try to teach under this pressure. Okay, so let me first define the word teacher. And before I go any further, please y'all bear with me. I am so nervous, a little intimidated. I have not been this way before, but I am really trusting God to get me through this tonight. 
So with that being said, let me just share with you what a teacher does, who a teacher is or should be. A teacher is one who assists others in learning, gives instruction. A teacher shares knowledge and models it by example. A teacher conveys what they've learned to others in a way that is understandable and engaging, appealing. A teacher also encourages and tries to, or make an attempt to convince the students. A teacher makes disciples, good students. A teacher always leads students with hope. And if I don't do anything else tonight, I would like to do just that one thing, leave you with some hope. I didn't actually know where to start when Apostle asked me, but I choose to take note from the best teacher I know, the greatest teacher I know, who is Jesus Christ himself. So reading the word, how he taught, I first want to begin with, well, let me say, Jesus, after being tempted by the devil and coming back with the response of the word of God, he came down or he came and he started a teaching ministry, if I can say it that way. He went about, well, let's turn, you can turn with me. Ooh, I'm nervous. You can turn with me, Matthew, fourth chapter, 23rd verse. And I'm just going to read a little of that verse. And it says, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Great multitudes followed him, says verse 25. And the fifth chapter and the first verse says, and seeing the multitude, I guess I better look into the camera. And seeing the multitude, he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. And for the next two chapters in Matthew, we will read about the teachings of Jesus to his disciples and the multitude. So I choose to share with you some of the teachings that he shared with the multitude. He started with the blessed arts. If you know what those are, blessed are the poor, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are those who hunger, blessed are the merciful, first blessed are the pure in heart, those. He started with those and then he began, he continued teaching, saying, we are the salt 
of the earth. We are the light of the world. He, he taught, do not swear, don't make an oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no. Jesus taught them to love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That's what Jesus said to them then and what he's saying to us today. Jesus taught them you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, your understanding. Love your neighbor as yourself. All other commandments and demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Jesus continues saying, teaching, when you do charitable deeds, do not let, let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Don't be a hypocrite. Let your charita de charitable deeds be in secret. And your father, which seeth in secret, will reward you openly. When you pray, he taught, go into your room to yourself, your closet, and shut the door. Pray to your father in that secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. He taught them the model prayer. And just an extension of that, I found a couple scriptures to go along with or to encourage encouraging us to pray. Luke 18, one says, men ought to always pray and not lose heart. First Peter four, seven, but let the end of all things, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers. First Thessalonians says, 517, pray without ceasing. He taught his disciples and the multitude, do not worry, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Fret not. but trust in the Lord and do good. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. You will find that in Psalms 37. Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known. To God. And the seventh verse says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, I know this is a lot of scripture. This is a lot of word, and maybe I should have given you the scriptures for all of these. 
but that's what a teacher does. A teacher teaches, a teacher says what Jesus says say. A teacher does what Jesus says do and how he says do it. I'm, I, I'm reminded of the last chapter in Matthew, I think it's 28 and around the 16th or the 17th verse, he says, go into all the world teaching and feel free to go to that text with me. But he said, go into all the world teaching and preaching the good news, that which I've commanded you. He said, make disciples. That's what a teacher does, make disciples. He says, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And just let me share with you, and I have other scriptures, because Jesus just kept walking around uh, man, teaching, preaching, and the word. In fact, he was the word, or he is the word, excuse me. So I don't want to bore you, but I want to share with you the word of God because in my experience, it's the word of God that has kept me. It's the word of God that has strengthened me. It's the word of God and, and the spirit of God in me that's kept me on track. Um, I know that we live in a day and a time where it's sometimes hard to be focused. It's sometimes hard to just even believe some of these things that's in the word of God. But Jesus wants us as teachers, preachers, prophets, evangelists, apostles. He wants us to go. He wants us to share. He wants us to convince the people and make disciples. He wants them, he wants us to get them to the point where they can believe in him and on his name and that he is exactly who he says that he is and that he do exactly what he says he will do. In the, in the subject is a word uncertainty. And so I even looked up the word uncertainty uh, because that's how some of us are feeling these days. We're in a state of uncertainty with everything going on around us. But, uh, and so the word in simple terms means uncertain, doubtful. And it's caused by, I read today, it, it's caused, it could be caused by a lack of information. So if you feel uncertain a lot of times, not, not just sometimes, not sometimes because all of us go there, but if you find yourself often in a state of uncertainty, it could be because you have a lack of, you don't have the information that you need to keep you on track. This uncertainty can leave you feeling stressed. It can feel, leave you feeling anxious and sometimes even powerless and can evoke or bring to mind negative emotions. And if I was, if I can be transparent with you, I will say that I have experienced that just shortly. In the, fat, in the last few months, there were days I felt anxious. 
There were days I felt powerless. There were days I felt a little stressed. And I know the word of God. Well, some of it. I know enough to keep me on track, but yet I found myself because I refused to go to the word of God. I found myself powerless and anxious. So that is the reason why I am coming to you with the word of God. Because as a teacher, that's what we do. And in order to make good students and disciples, that's what that's our position, our job, our responsibility, our task, our charge. So that's why I'm coming to you the way that I am, because that's what teachers do. Y'all, I am so nervous, so please bear with me. Jesus convinced his disciples to tell the people or convince the people to believe on him that he is the savior of the world. He came from heaven down. He came and modeled the way that we should go. He modeled love. He modeled grace. He modeled patience. He modeled so many things, but also like a teacher, that's what we do. So Jesus wants us today to believe on his name, to believe that he is the answer. He wants us to believe that no matter how it looks right now, it's really gonna be all right. In the 37th chapter of Psalms, he's saying to us, don't fret. How many of you in the past three months have been in a state of fret? Can I share with you a few of the verses? Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. The third verse says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Verse 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret. I'm sorry. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who bring wicked schemes. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. So let me encourage you today as a part of what I'm supposed to be doing is let me encourage you not to fret. Let me encourage you not to be anxious. Let me encourage you to know within yourself that God is sovereign and that God is God. And it's okay to be uncertain sometimes, but the Christian has hope. We should always be hopeful. We should always remember who our source is. We should always remember how powerful God is, how great 
God is, how loving God in, is. And in spite of what we see, God still rules. God still reigns. Can I get somebody to say amen? Jesus said in his teaching, we can go back to his teachings. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. And we know that's the spirit of truth. And that helper, helper will abide with you forever. In good times, in bad times, in happy times, in sad times, no matter the helper will be with you forever. He also said that in that last chapter of Matthew, lo, I am with you always. Jesus was warning his disciples that I am going away, but I won't leave you as orphans. I will come back to you in the person of the Holy Spirit. And I will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. I will leave you my peace. I will give you peace. He also taught them that we should love one another as he loves us. Greater love has no man than one that lays down his life for his friend. Jesus taught how much the Father even loves us, that he sent Jesus down to us. Jesus wants us to believe and to know that we can believe on him, he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Believe in your heart that he died and rose again, that we might be saved saved from the penalty of sin. I think Jesus wants to share with our sisters and brothers, our friends, our loved ones, our coworkers, and family members, distant family members, that there is hope. And we as Christians, we need to have hope today. We need to be ready to share why we hope. And it's all about the word of God. It's all about the spirit of God. It's all about knowing who God is and what he's capable of doing, which is all things, anything, at any time. God is sovereign, God is all powerful and all knowing and ever present. That's the God that we serve. There are other gods we know, and there are our idols that we make ourselves. But let me tell you, Jesus is the only one that we can depend on. Jesus is the only one that has our backs. Jesus is the only one who says, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus is the one that says, I will help you. Jesus 
is the one that says, I love you so much. You can't even imagine. The Bible says he so loved us. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. I do want to be transparent and I do want to go here for just a little bit because I've shared with you that the past few months there were times that I was a little anxious. I thought I'd had enough and couldn't take any more and found myself having to take more. I didn't have sense enough to turn the television off or the radio or social media. But let me assure you that in spite of the way that I was feeling, Jesus came through. I had a couple of conversations with some friends and family members, and I was just saying, I don't know if I can just make it through all of this. Not like giving up or fainting or anything like that. It was like, I just wanna go somewhere and sit down. I don't wanna talk about it. I don't wanna go to the word. Some days I didn't want to pray. I was just wondering how I was going to get through this. But just sharing with you the faithfulness of God, how faithful God is, how loving God is, how patient he is with all of us. I just want to give him glory that I started to feel better. And I know how I started feeling better. And y'all, it was the word of God. It was going to the closet. It was going to that secret place. And sometimes I didn't have a word to say. Sometimes I, I couldn't find a word to say. I didn't even know how to approach Jesus except to just sit at his feet and be blessed. And I want you to know that he came through for me. I want you to know that he blessed me. I want you to know that he touched me. I want you to know that he spoke to me. He spoke life. He spoke victory. He spoke love. He spoke joy. He spoke peace to me. Y'all, I didn't know if I was going to lose it, but he did that for me. And it's all in the word of God. We used to sing a song long time ago. I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sent breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. I heard the force of Jesus telling me still to fight on. He promised never to leave me alone. And in that last chapter of Matthew, and he told us what to do. He told us to go. He told us to win souls. He told us to preach and to teach and to make disciples. And the, the promise that he gave to us is, lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. And he has proven himself faithful. So even in this time of uncertainty, y'all, we can depend on Jesus. We can call on him. He promised 
that he will answer and show us great and mighty things we can't even imagine. He just wants us to love him and to keep his commandments, and he got it from there. He got it. Or should I say he has it? We can trust him. Whatever is going on around him, pick up this word, believe that every word is true, and watch how you handle it. Because I saw somebody not so long ago, they didn't know how to handle this Bible, and that was the that'll preach all by itself. But just pick up this word and be blessed. It's true. It's rewarding. It's life. What else can I say except to just encourage you to be faithful to God and he'll be faithful to you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will. He promised he will direct your path. I think this concludes my little teaching moment and I praise God for it. And I hope that I was able to convince you in some way that the word, it's all in here, all that he would have us know all that he would have us believe is right here. And he wants us to know it for ourselves. He wants us to share it with our sisters and our brothers. He wants us to go into the world where the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few and convince the world that Jesus is the way the only way. God bless you. God love you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, Teacher Mavis, what a wonderful word we just received. I want to say thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for just allowing God through your candidness, through your humble heart, uh, humility, and uh, your transparency as well to share and impart to us today. Um, I have tons of takeaway uh, that I got from just this word here on this evening. Um, I'm so grateful. You know, you touched on a particular scripture um, just a few verses back, um, Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the, shadow of the Almighty. You know, that has been my scripture and that in verse two, you know, um, has been my scripture um, of reference in the last few hours. Um, I put it even as close as that because it's been resonating in my ear and uh, really my spirit. And, you know, in times like this, like where we are now and being uncertain, we need a word. And that's just what you fed us tonight, mm -hmm. the word of God. Mm -hmm. I know without fail, folks, um, that you have been blessed by the ministry gift of that of Teacher Mavis. So please go ahead and give her a shout out. Let her know how wonderful uh, she did on tonight. I'm excited um, uh, for what God is going to do next in her. Now, um, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking and reflecting back on some of my notes taken. Uh, the, the one thing that stood out to me um, about her being transparent, um, you know, the whether the, you know, the nerves were what they were, um, you know, she was speaking about uncertainty, but yet um, even to the end where she's doing what she's doing, there's an ounce of uncertainty in that, but God prevailed and saw her through it. And like he saw her through it, I want to encourage you that are listening, that he'll mm -hmm. see through whatever you're going through. Likewise, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I do believe that the heaven is rejoicing right now because someone, no doubt, I believe, was not only strengthened by the word, 
but came to the Lord as a result of it. So welcome to the kingdom if you so chose Christ today or you're affirming or reaffirming your commitment to walk with him. We rejoice with you likewise. Listen, I won't keep it any longer because I know the spirit of the Lord is continually ministering to someone tonight. Um, we're going to go ahead and pray in a moment. But again, if you are a first time guest with us, we welcome you to this uh, experience, um, the core experience, and we pray that you are indeed blessed. Uh, if you missed the announcement on the top of the video, I want to share with you, you have an opportunity right now to be a blessing to this ministry as we continue to broadcast week after week and continue to share it in our community likewise. So go ahead and be a partaker in the experience to sow. You can do that at any time, even uh, after the replay of this video or rather the recording has ended. All right. With that being said, folks, um, I just want to say again, uh, Teacher Mavis, thank you so much. You are indeed a blessing, and we can't hear, wait rather to hear from you again um, and to share in your ministry gift likewise. Um, would you do us the honor and would you pray us out as we bring uh, this broadcast to a close? Yes, sir. So, Father, I bless you. I'm so grateful to you for your goodness and for your mercy and for your grace. God, I thank you for the anointing that's on my life, Lord God. I thank you for the power of God that's in me. I thank you for filling me day by day with your spirit. God, I thank you for using me even this evening. Yes, God. Even in the state that I'm in right now, Lord God, I, I just thank you that I was able to get through it with your thank help you. and by your grace. And I pray that the word of God reached those who need to hear, reach those who need to be remind, reminded, reach those, Lord God, who haven't felt the love, who haven't felt the peace, who haven't felt, even heard the word of God before. God, let there be someone as a result of this word come to you wanting to be saved, wanting to know you in a personal way, because that's what it's all about, making disciples. We honor you tonight. We bless you. And God, I thank you for Apostle just giving me a chance and have this platform to talk to the world, people all over the world. And God, we pray that we will all just grow in your grace and in your knowledge, Lord God. And we be, will always be ready to give somebody a reason for the hope that's in us. And it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. So we thank you for your love and for your saving grace, Lord God. And we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be found acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Folks, until next time, God bless you. Be sure to check out our other videos here as a part of the core experience. God bless you now. Bye-bye.